Hello, hello you. Welcome or welcome back to this episode in this challenging series full of surprises and interesting movements. We will start on the knees. This is going to be our start position to stand, stand on both knees. So this is not the first episode and it's not the last episode. It's not the first movement in this series. There have been a lot of movements before and there will be a lot of movements afterwards. So, our <laughs> just that you know if you're new to this series. So what's, what's our movement? Stand on both knees and stand both feet. So we have been working on this, to stand the toes and then with your right hand, lean on your right heel a little bit. Just touch your feet lightly, lean on your right heel lightly with your right hand and with your left hand <laughs> we have come this far now it is the time to lean with the left hand on your left heel so with the right hand on the right heel and with the left hand on the left heel <laughs> and and see how we can ease into this how we get can get comfortable yes <laughs> so and this Actually, it's not the movement, but this is the starting position. This, uh, this very comfortable or uncomfortable depends, depends on how often we have done this. This position um, and then the movement is to roll again, to bring the heels closer to each other and the heels further apart from each other. And you see I'm already taking a little break, so please, I invite you to take breaks in between. And our exploration is about the toes. So you roll, when you move your heel to the outside, your heels to the outside, you roll more onto the small toe, but when you roll the heels, when you roll your feet, when you bring the heels closer, well, we can do this even without hands, can we? So when you, <laughs> when you move your feet, reposition your feet and you feel for the point of support, where, where do you actually, where can you actually lean on your toes the best, where is the best support? And technically the best support is not on the small toes because the small toes are so small. It's also not just the big toes, but the space in between the big toe and the second toe. Now, to make this position a little bit easier, uh, we have to do a couple of auxiliary movements. And we will do this in lying on the back, yes, that's nice. So please, I invite you, if you may follow, to lie down on your back in a supine position. Uh, yes, and just take a moment to rest, come to rest on your back. Mm. And then let's stand the left foot. So bring your left foot to stand close to your pelvis. So your left foot is standing firmly in a mechanically advantaged position to lift, to roll the pelvis to the right, to roll the pelvis to the right. So please push the floor, push against the floor with your left foot, but relax. Let go of, of all the rest, so just push down with your left foot so that your pelvis does not lift, but your pelvis rolls to the right. The pelvis rolls to the right when you push with the foot down. And not just that, let's focus on something different actually. Focus on your left knee. So think about your left knee, you push, you drive, you, you drive your left knee away from you. It's like almost like shooting an arrow. So the left knee away from your chest. So this movement, the left knee away from your chest and then what happens if you feel, if you feel, you feel what, what happens if you do this movement. So your, the left side of your pelvis lifts and your pelvis rolls to the right and maybe your right leg, observe your right leg, your right leg might also roll and and of course, all the ribs, the ribs, the roll, the ribs move in relation to each other, one rib after the other. So when the pelvis rolls, one rib after the other, and maybe there's a side bending to the left, and maybe you're looking to the right or overhead. 
and allow this. So this is important to allow your upper body to slide, slide on the floor when you push with your left foot, when you drive your left knee away from you towards the ceiling. Don't let your left knee, when you drive your left knee away from you towards the ceiling, don't let your left knee move to the right or to the midline. Let your left knee drive towards the ceiling when you do this. Yes, and maybe just focus on the beginning of this movement. Just very small, very little, a very small movement so you can feel the details of this. Push and drive the knee forwards and where, where do you have effort that you don't need? Can you breathe freely while doing the movement? Can you have the movement independent from your breathing? And very slowly and a very gentle movement, bigger and bigger, and maybe your upper body can slide. So we will need this in, in a few minutes. And then also stand your right foot. So have both feet standing. And do the same movement with your left knee. So drive the left knee away from you so that your left hip joint actually lifts up, but the right one when will the right hip joint lift? When you push your left knee away, the same movement we just did, just that the right foot is standing, so the left part of your hip comes up, and at some point, of course, your right hip follows, but a little bit later, and then when you're up, stay up so your effort your effort your, your work is in your left leg the left leg is stabilizing you're standing on your left foot and where on your right shoulder so you have two leaning points your left foot and your right shoulder mostly and your right leg keep your right leg free so allow your right leg to fall to the side to fall open and close your right leg to the, your right knee to the left knee and then the right knee away from the left knee all the while you're up so you have a like a bridge that spans from your left foot to your right shoulder yeah so do this a couple of times just to establish this pattern of coming up with your left hip joint first and following or dragging along your, <laughs> your, your right, your, the rest of yourself. And then, and then it's time for a break. So we'll keep this brief. And then we will do the same exploration with the right side, the right foot. So please stand your right foot as close as possible to your right hip joint. So it's, not, it's not about close, but about a position that's optimized mechanically for lifting. So push down with your right foot, drive away your right knee, So which will, of course, Turn the pelvis to the left and, and do just this first movement a little bit. So just the very beginning of this movement of pushing the floor so you feel so you can feel the details. Where do you push? Where do you how how, how do you do this? If you have this question, if I may ask this question, how, how do you do a movement? So there's an intention. So you want to do something and then you need to make it happen somehow. So you're pressing and pushing and pulling and, and allow your, your chest to bend, to mend, to be mended, to twist, to slide on the floor. And you can go faster and bigger and slower and stay in control of these movements. So don't just do one movement after the other, like uh, you're already in the production line, but <laughs> it's, still, it's still in the R&D phase. Research and development.
and then at some point stand your left foot so that's the big difference the left foot is standing so when you do the movement you drive away your right knee right hip joint comes up so that the left one can follow and then let lose your left knee your left leg so that the left knee can come closer to your right knee or drop away from your right knee and start this movement all over again until you have you, you get a good feeling for this lifting for coming up into a back bridge actually but with one foot first so you have a bridge from your right foot to your left shoulder and then the left side of your pelvis is following up until <laughs> so yes and that's good if you start to slide on the if you start to slide on the floor if your chest is flexible you can feel all the ribs and drive up your hip from leading either now now drive up your hip leading either with your left foot and your right shoulder or your right foot and your left shoulder until your, your pelvis is up high and when your pelvis is up high you can either hold your feet so you see we mimic we we investigate into this position we had in kneeling before but now on the back it's safer we can focus more on the details because we don't have to balance we don't have to use so much power we can do it just a little we can do it a lot maybe you can even stand your lower arms and rest your your pelvis in your hands <laughs> that's actually I've been playing with this movement for the past week and it's actually the first time in my life, I'm now 47, the first time in my life I, I, <laughs> I did this <laughs> to rest the pelvis in my hands like this it wasn't possible before but now now for some reason it seems easy You could even, I don't know, lift one leg, do this <laughs> yoga, yoga things. We could even come up like this. So you can play with these things, with these movements in, in this series. With this, if you learn the movements by heart, make the movements your own. You can play with them and and just see, like in the first first couple of lessons we were playing with putting the leg to the side just just see how the many now it's the seventh episode how the many movements of all the episodes they connect to each other and we're moving <laughs> we are moving like a cruise ship slowly but one day we will arrive in Barbados <laughs> something like this okay so take a short rest a well a well earned rest see how you're lying on your back how that feels like now if you flatten it to your back and then we will continue in kneeling again so we will come back to this first kneeling position so please come up onto your knees Yes, and when you're on your knees, stand the toes and with your right hand lean on your right heel and with your left hand lean on your left heel and just see how that's now and if you can now focus better on moving your heels in and out, touching your heels together. If you are more aware of, if you have more resources available in your feel core <laughs> in, in, in your ability to feel how you lean 
on your toes. <clears throat> so, okay. That's that, and then, and then let's take a short break in standing. Just come to up to stand for a couple of seconds. Just to see if standing still works, if that's still possible, how you align yourself, how you up on your legs, how your feet feel. Okay, and then back on to all fours. <clears throat> on all fours with your feet stand with your toes standing. So the, keep your heels together, heels together, big toes together, fan out your toes so that give the toes a good spread, so they have a good spread. So you can lean again on the points which are in between your big toes and your second toes. And you're on your knees and on your hands. So it's actually a six point stand. The toes, the knees and the hands. So this is our starting position. Yes, so the heels together and, and sit back with your pelvis on your heels. So here we have again the bending of the toes, the flexion of the ankles and how the feet relate to the knees and the hip joints and the spine. And then lift your knees to come to sit more on your heels. So you lift up slowly, slowly. So we don't go back all the way into a squatting position. We will do this in a later episode. Now just focus on, on the beginning of this movement. So when you have the knees together, the knees are close together on the floor and then you lift the knees, which means you bring your weight a little bit backward to fully sit or try to sit with your butt, <laughs> with your behind, on your heels. And when you do so, uh, move your knees apart. So, it's like a little, what is this, a little frog position. We focus on the movement. The knees on the floor together, or the knees away from the floor, apart, and with the focus of sitting with your behind on your heels and the heels together. So this is a movement and you don't have to do the, the, the whole range from the knees on the floor and the knees far away from the floor. It can be just a little. And to make this more interesting, let's do circles. So it's not just up and down, but also out and together. And since it's up and down and outwards and towards each other, the knees, the knees, we can do circles, circles of the knees. But of course, it's just the effect. The effect is the circles of the knees. But we're working on our toes and our ankles. The ankles bend more or less. And the toes bend more or less. Yes, so when you need a break, I suggest a break in standing, just to come up, to stand, to have a little break. And whenever you need, or, or you, you, you continue. So to make this movement very, very clear, the heels together, the big toes together, the knees towards the floor, or even touching the floor, or the knees away from the floor, with the focus of sitting on the heels. So you, so you really, you're sitting on the heels. And then our movement is the knees, circles of the knees. So the knees can eventually come to the floor in front of you and touch each other, or come away from the floor. So we can have different positions for the hands. In, for example, the hands in front of you, 
we're not practicing isolated movements, but we are in a sequence and one movement improves on the other. So we're not trying to force a movement. We are unlocking movements through levels, through going through a whole series of movements and each movement is building upon the next. So now let's move on in this lesson. Please come to lie on your back. Let's take a break on the back in Poseidon. Poseidon, supine position. Ah. And isn't it nice to extend the legs once they have been fully bent? Now, to continue, please I stand both feet and let's do a little warm up for the next and final movement. So warm up, warm up first with your right hand, hold, get hold of your right foot and pull your right foot underneath your pelvis so that your right foot is standing underneath your pelvis on the toes. So the foot is standing on the toes again and we did this in the previous lesson in this series. Just move your heel inside and outside the heel of your right foot and help with your right hand to move the heel inside and outside or backwards and forwards or circles just to warm up a little bit in this <laughs> as if we didn't warm up in kneeling actually it's quite the same thing but the position of the torso is a bit different isn't it so you might want to lean on your shoulders or might even lean on the back of your head and that's where we need this sliding, this pliability, this flexibility of the chest to accommodate this foot position. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Can't stay too long in this position, maybe. Okay, then again, we'll do the same thing with the left foot. Just to pull the left foot underneath your pelvis and move the heel of your left foot a little bit inside and outside and forwards and backwards or what we also had is to keep the heel in place and slide the pelvis over the heel so instead of moving the foot you're moving the pelvis left and right so let's warm up a little bit And then take a short rest before we move swiftly into the last movement. So the last, the last movement, the last thing we want to do today. So please stand your feet, lift your pelvis and position both feet underneath your pelvis. So that the heels are together, the big toes are touching, heels together, big toes touching and position, position your pelvis on top of your heels. So your pelvis <coughs> is resting and you have to slide, <laughs> slide your and accommodate this somehow and approximations, approximations. So don't lean on the small toes but lean on the space in between your big toe and your second toe so that's this is imperative this cannot be negotiated not negotiable the the weight need to be on the big toes and the second toes the, the bulk of the weight and take, take a break when whenever you you need so this is our starting position and from here we return to the circles of the knees, knees outside and inside and forwards and backwards. And when the knees come together, they go down to touch the floor. And when the knees come apart, they also lift away from the floor. So that's, that's the idea. I wouldn't know that this is even possible if it wasn't for other people. So some people are naturally that flexible. So 
you might be like myself, we have to work for this because I didn't work on it the last, <sighs> I don't know, <laughs> the first 30 years of my life I didn't and then maybe as a baby I did, but I'm not sure. So circles of the knees and when the knees are together, and they go down to the floor and when they are apart they come up so that that's the idea but there's nothing to copy from me <laughs> because approximations approximations it it, it the, 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 the journey the journey is the goal the the journey yes so it's about the beauty the important thing is not the end position for the Instagram photo, but the, the movement exploration, the ability to sense ourselves, to appreciate our learning, the way we learn to appreciate how we move, what we have, what we have actually. The ears are working and the eyes are working, so that's quite amazing already. A lot to be thankful for and then we can do this movement and these explora explorations and, and with these explorations we're discovering things. So, and maybe then someday the knees touch the floor. So I hope you can achieve that through this series eventually. But don't press yourself. But explore your way, make an inroad through these movements. That's almost... <laughs> and another thing, I noticed I can do already, which I couldn't when I started this series, is sit in between my feet. So that somehow became possible. And just three days ago, I noticed I can <laughs> recline myself almost, but that's not part of the lesson, just my sharing. So have you been busy? Have you even been listening to me? Not so important, just focus on the movements. We are at the end of the lesson and we want to see, we want to feel how this is in standing. So what these movements, this was quite, quite a series of movements today, quite a bit. Um, or should we take a break in lying down on the back? Maybe you have already been lying on the back or you could take, make a short pause in this video right now on your back, enjoy a minute or two or a <laughs> 10 minutes, a small nap on your back and then come up, continue the video, come up and see how it is in standing. So that's important. We need to face the world. We need to come up. And just stand casually breathe and see if your legs are still working and, and feel how they're working, how, how your weight is coming down on your feet and actually bouncing back internally. That, that's physics. So we are pressing down through gravity onto our structure and at the same time the structure is not only resisting this pressing because we're not jelly, we're kind of jelly but stronger than jelly. We're, it's like a spring, it springs up again. There's a counter, counter force which, it's not just stacking, but it's a counter force of, of fluids. And wow, hip joints, huh? Hip joints much more open. Hip joints much more open and flexible. And good support, good, good midline, good, good point for walking and standing. And this lesson might open up quite a few things unexpectedly. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson as much as I enjoyed teaching and presenting. And stay safe. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.